What happens if you don't do well in school? Well, you build a castle, you create your own country and name it after yourself, and then you live happily ever after. Today, I am at the country of Rubelia in Glendora at Rubel Castle. Nothing I tell you today about Rubel Castle is going to compare to actually experiencing it. This was the life work of Michael Rubel, who barely graduated high school. He said, you know, if I'm not going to do well scholastically, I might as well go home and build a fort. And this is what I did. That screech isn't the Gates Creek, but a neighborhood peacock portending what's to come. Peacocks have long been associated with royalty, and we're about to step into the country of Rubelia to see Rubel Castle. When you walk in the gate, one of the first things you see is a red caboose. Why? Because Michael wanted a red caboose. The caboose took all my attention when I walked in that I didn't even see the horses in their small pasture. And look at this! Chickens! <laughs> hey, Rooster. Fancy pants. The caboose is original and authentic, except for an added bathtub. It used to be used as a living space, not the bathtub, the caboose. Hence why they added a bathtub. Behind the caboose, <laughs> that sounds kind of silly, doesn't it? Behind the caboose, since the caboose is behind. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> behind the caboose is the graveyard. Plenty of headstones, but no bodies are actually buried there. Michael's entire childhood was building forts out of old cast-off materials, and that didn't change when he started building his castle. The headstones were mistakes, cast-offs that the stonemasons were happy to donate to Michael. We'll see how he used them in the castle a little later. Here's Michael's headstone. He's not buried here either. Check out this old car. It's a 1929 Studebaker. These cars haven't fared as well. The long-term vision is to restore them. Key phrase being long-term. <laughs> Everything here has a story behind it, more than I can tell you in this video. As of today, all of the docents who give tours personally knew Michael, and some of them even worked with him building the castle. So no matter which docent you get, you will get really personal stories. Okay, let's head into the castle. The entrance to the castle is across from the caboose. And what castle is complete without a drawbridge? Okay, we all know this is not really a drawbridge, but we're in the country of Rubelia, and we can call it whatever we want. <laughs> Look, they have a dragon. <laughs> of course they do. <laughs> Here's the courtyard. Just take it all in. This was built by a guy who had a high school education, but he learned how to engineer these structures so that they would last, even when there are earthquakes. He started building in the late 60s and finished in 1986, and there is not a single crack anywhere. He used railroad ties as rebar. There are mattress springs in the walls, along with bicycles, plural. He stuck all kinds of things in the walls. Remember the headstones in the graveyard? He used them here for steps. When Michael was alive, this is where he lived. He called it the King's Quarters. There are several other apartments in the castle that are rented out. Yes, people actually live here. How cool is that? This castle is amazing. The clock is super interesting. It was built in 1896 by the prestigious Seth Thomas Clock Company, and it's only one of six built. Normally, it keeps great time, but 
today it's a little fast. These photos show Michael and his friends raising the clock tower. So the tour group is watching a video of Huell Hauser and I saw that last night. It is almost noon and the clock chimes at noon and there is also a whistle at noon. So I asked if I could come outside and get the video of that. <laughs> so we're waiting for the clock tower to chime. The clock tower actually looks like it's coming up on one. So, oh, there we go. I wanted to go over and show you the inside of the clock tower while the bell was chiming because it's fascinating. I have no idea how it works, but you've got these flaps circling and you see the cable that pulls the clapper to ring the bell. And there's this thingy going around. I mean, it is so cool to see how a 120 year old mechanical bell works. That was pretty darn cool. The noon whistle though didn't blow. Not sure why, but that's okay. We got the clock. Well, duh. Didn't I just say the clock was a little fast today? little things. Speaking of little things, this tiny building is the bottle house. It was the first castle structure Michael built as a place to get away from the music, dancing, and general ruckusness of his mother's large and regularly occurring dinner parties. Ooh, look at this safe. I wonder what it's guarding. It's a linen closet. <laughs> There's no blacksmith working today, but this is where the blacksmiths do their work. They actually have a forge, a very traditional blacksmith shop here. Next to one of the apartments is the escape tunnel, again, made out of bottles. It leads to the Tin Palace. The Tin Palace was on the property when Michael bought it. It used to be a packing house. This is where Michael and his mother lived when he was building the castle and where she gave her legendary dinner parties. There is so much history here, too much to include in this video, but I wanted to show you these rooms. They were the refrigerators in the packing house and you can still feel the cooling as you stand next to them. I miss the group exiting and I am locked in the portcullis. <laughs> I am locked inside the castle. There are worse places you could be stuck. So Michael Rubel may not have done well in school, but he has left a lasting legacy. It is well worth your time to come here to Glendora and see Rubel Castle. I hope this helps you find your adventure. Thank you for watching.